If you ever think negatively about credit cards, it's probably because half of American cardholders carry credit card debt, which many have no plan to pay it off. Believe it or not, credit cards, when used properly, can actually provide great rewards such as cash back or travel benefits, or will also allow you to build your credit score, which will make the process of getting a loan much easier. So whether you have credit card experience or not, before I even show you some of the best no annual fee credit cards, here's a quick breakdown on what you must understand before applying. The first thing is that when you get a credit card, you must make sure that you can pay it in full and on time. You see, the reason this is so important is because with credit card debt, you're not just paying back what you borrowed because if you're late to pay off your credit card, you're gonna be charged interest. And it's actually a lot of interest. So when you apply for a credit card, there's gonna be something called APR. This stands for annual percentage rate, which is basically the annual cost you have to pay if you borrow on the card and don't pay it full and on time. For example, let's say you have a credit card and you have a balance carried over that you can't pay, assuming you have poor credit, which means you pose a higher risk to lenders. Let's just exaggerate this and say you have to pay an APR of 28.5%. Let's say you have a $3,000 balance that you can't pay off. This is called the credit card debt, and because you can't pay it off, you put it on the side, you don't touch it, and three years later, you decide you want to start paying it off, but because the rate was 28.5% of interest on your $3,000 balance you left and never paid, that means after the first year, Year, it would have ended up being $3,855 that you would owe. By that second year, it would actually be $4,953. And by that third year, if you have done nothing in that time, the balance would have built up to be $6,365 all from buying $3,000 worth of things that you put on your credit card that you couldn't pay off. So the way I like to view this that I believe is super motivating is to understand the two directions that could occur with your money. For starters, you could have credit card debt and get in a loophole where you can't pay it off and the debt just continues to get bigger and bigger over time. Or you can take control of your finances and pay off that debt, earn rewards, get free travel and other perks where with control of the finances, you could then invest your money where your money can then grow larger and larger over time. This is what's called the power of compound interest and it's extremely important to understand because you either have to pay interest over time or you gain interest over time. One way can lose you more and more money and the other can gain you more and more money. Now I talk a lot about this stuff on my channel so if you are interested consider subscribing and checking out my previous videos. But all in all the longer it takes you to pay off that credit card debt the more money banks will make which is the biggest reason why companies like Chase are able to fork up millions of dollars toward travel benefits with their sapphire cards because they make so much money from credit card debt so knowing that the first credit card is if you have absolutely no credit score or you have bad credit that you need to fix and that would be through the discover it secured card this is a great option to consider because it is a secured card which means you will put down a security deposit which will act as your credit line which can be anywhere from 200 up to two thousand five hundred dollars and so the way this works is by you depositing let's say five hundred dollars that five hundred dollars is now your credit limit and going forward you could use this card similar to any ordinary credit card. Understand that as you pay for things with this card, the security deposit, that $500, you aren't going to be using that to pay for things. That money is gone and you'll be refunded that at the end once you prove that you can pay your balance in full and on time each month. So with this example, in the first month, you spend $50 on this credit card, you pay it off using other cash you have, and as you do this properly over time, you will improve your credit score. And after seven months, Discover says they will automatically review your account to see if you qualify to upgrade to a normal credit card, which you will get the $500 deposit back. Just so you know with credit cards, you ideally want to keep the amount that you put on the card compared to your credit limit under 30%, which is called the utilization rate. And having the number under 10% is even better. So $50 put on a credit card with a $500 limit is really good. Now Discover shows on their page that you can actually raise your credit score by at least 30 points using this card. And there's also no credit score required to apply. You can then see below that this card charges no annual fee where you can also earn 2% cash back at gas stations and restaurants on up to $1,000 in combined purchases each quarter plus an unlimited 1% cash back on all other purchases. Plus a unique benefit with this is that you can get an unlimited dollar for dollar match on all the cash back you earn at the end of your first year. So let's say after your first year you earn $100 total in cash back from using this card, Discover will reward you with another $100 at the end of your first year with the card. From there, you can also see the other popular credit card benefits that they provide, such as online protection, fraud liability on unauthorized purchases, 100% US customer service to speak with a real person, you can see your FICO credit score for free, and use the simple tap to pay method with this card. 
So of all the credit cards I'm showing you in this video, if you are one that's just getting started and you have no experience, you don't understand them that much, and you wanna start building your score safely, or if you're in a bad position and you need to fix your credit, the Discover It Secured card may be among the best option for you. Now I will say, if you are a student, you may be more interested in the Discover It Student Cashback card, which also has no annual fee and no credit score required to apply. So moving on from Discover, the next option you may want to consider would be the Capital One Saver One Rewards card. Now before I even discuss this card in details, if you are a student, you may be more interested in their Saver One student card. But with the regular Saver One Rewards card, this is a popular choice for all around purchases because you can earn 8% cash back on Capital One entertainment purchases and unlimited 3% back on dining, entertainment, popular streaming services, and at grocery stores, excluding superstores like Walmart and Target. Which, speaking of groceries, something I recently received from the company Magic Mind was a sample package of their mental performance shots that I've been taking before researching and scripting my videos. I've been using it for 15 days now and I found it very helpful with deep focus work. I also like the distinct taste and the fact that I can drink it in between my morning and afternoon coffee, which I've also noticed my productivity and getting things done has also taken a step up, so I look forward to using them more. Which, if you are interested to check it out yourself, I also have a 20% discount link in the description below for but with the Saber One Rewards card, you can get this card at no annual fee. You can reap a $200 one-time cash bonus once you spend $500 within three months of opening the account, where you can also earn 5% back on hotels and car rentals booked through the Capital One Travel, and then 1% back on all other purchases where the rewards don't expire for the life of the account. And with this card, it is recommended you have at least a 670 credit score or higher before you apply, which for the Capital One cards, you can see if you're pre-approved for card offers with no harm to your credit. And like I said, if you are a student brand new to credit cards, you may want to consider the Saver One Rewards for Students card. Moving on from there, the next popular credit card issuer that you may be interested to get started with is American Express with their American Express Blue Cash Everyday card. For some of you, you may already have heard about the Amex Gold card that has an annual fee of $325 and even their Amex Platinum with a $695 annual fee, which you do get insane benefits with the cards, but that's for another video. This Blue Cash Everyday card may be an option to consider. You see, with this card, you can see if you're approved with no credit score impact, but it's recommended you have a credit score above 670. And just so you know, with any new credit card, your score is going to take a small temporary dip. It's gonna go back up in time, especially as you prove that you can use the card properly, and the more cards that you can prove to fully manage the right way, the better your score can actually become. But with this Blue Cash Everyday card, you can earn a $250 statement credit after you spend $2,000 in purchases on the new card within the first six months. Also get 3% back on US online retail purchases with the same option of up to $6,000 per year than 1% after, and also 3% back at US gas stations on up to $6,000 per year than 1%. Where after that, you can get another 1% cash back on all other purchases, which they also provide other featured benefits that you may be interested in, like getting credit back for spending in areas like Disney or Home Chef meal kits. So if you want an everyday card to build a relationship into the Amex ecosystem, the Blue Cash Everyday card may be one that is super interesting to you. Which moving on from that, the last option I'm going to consider is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Currently, the Chase cards are among my favorite as I have what's called the Chase Trifecta, which is the Freedom Flex, Freedom Unlimited, and a Sapphire card, either the Sapphire Preferred or Reserve, which is where the travel benefits come into play. Now, before I even mention the Freedom Unlimited, if you are one brand new to getting started, you don't have a bank account or any experience with Chase and say you're not even a student, you may want to consider getting the Freedom Rise, where to begin with this card, no prior credit history is required to qualify. But as I just said, something that helps with getting approved for Chase's cards is having a checking or savings account with them prior to applying. But with the Freedom Rise, you can get a 1.5% cash back on all purchases, a $25 statement credit when you set up automatic payments, no annual fee, and best of all, if you start with this card, if used properly, you can eventually upgrade it to the Freedom Unlimited card. But if you already have a credit score of 670 or higher, especially if you already have a bank account with Chase, you should just skip this step and go straight to the Freedom Unlimited. Now, the Freedom Unlimited was actually the first credit card that I got because I had a Chase account for many years before getting the credit card, and I credit piggybacked off of my dad's Capital One credit card. Credit piggybacking just means that someone adds you as an authorized user on their credit card, which will allow you to 
to benefit from their positive credit history with that card. So if you're someone that needs to get your credit score up and fast, this may be one of the quickest and easiest ways that you could do so, which I made an entire video on how to build your credit score fast, that if you're interested, I'll have linked in the description below, as well as other relevant credit card content I think you'll greatly benefit from. But with the Freedom Unlimited, the reason it's a great beginner credit card is because it is an all around cashback card where with the card you can earn 3% back on dining at restaurants, including takeout and eligible delivery services, 3% back on drugstore purchases, 5% back on travel purchased through Chase's travel portal, and then 1.5% back on all other purchases, which the rewards you earn never expire. And with the card, you'll also reap the popular credit card benefits such as liability protection, extended warranty, and free credit score access. Chase also has some of the best signup bonuses in the entire industry, where with this card, you can get a $200 bonus after you spend $500 on purchases in the first three months from opening the account. And I will mention the Freedom Flex is also a great option to consider because you can earn 5% back on bonus categories that change throughout the year. Which if you end up choosing the Chase ecosystem, I highly recommend you end up getting this card and understand the benefits of utilizing the Chase trifecta. Which I know a lot of that may seem confusing, so if you are interested to learn more, especially about Chase credit cards that I've already made a ton of videos on, I'll have them all linked in the description below. And if you are interested to sign up for any of the credit cards I've just mentioned, I'll have direct links for you to get started in the description below, which depending on the card, I do earn a commission for. So if you are going to get the card and you use my links, I would really appreciate that. And as always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notifications button for future content like this.